So, <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> so, a couple years ago, my daughters asked me, they were like, Mom, we need you to take us and our business partners to the farmer's market to sell our products. And I was like, what is happening? You are seven and nine. You do not have business partners. <laughs> and they were like, no, we do. And they went on to explain to me how they had launched an origami, origami business at their school, and they didn't use the word saturated, saturating the market, but that's what they started to explain <laughs> to me. Like they had sold to their teachers, they had sold to their friends, and they really had like saturated the market and they had all this inventory, and now they needed me to take them to the farmer's market with their business partners. <laughs> so, I mean, after a pitch like that, what could I do? We packed the car up and we <laughs> headed down to Montclair Farmer's Market and we didn't ask permission, and we just set up a little table like this. <laughs> <laughs> and the six girls, like, they just pitched their products and people bought them. And at the end of the day, it was this wonderful experience where they made a profit and they donated some of the proceeds to World Wildlife Fund. It's this great experience. And a few months later, we moved to a new neighborhood and we thought, well, we can do this again and maybe we can meet some new people in the process. So we put this note up on Facebook community for the area that we live in and said, are there other girls that either have a business or you want to get one kickstarted? Come join us at the farmer's market, like in the new area that we live in. This is like through the tunnel. So we put it up and we're like, maybe we'll get a dozen girls. We'll go do it again. 50 girls signed up. We were instantly bigger than the farmer's market. Like, <laughs> like I just had no idea that there were girls that were like this age that were already like little business people. Yeah, I just thought that this was like a one-off. Just my kids were, you know, <laughs> gifted or something, but they're all doing it. <laughs> So, <laughs> so with that, I was like, okay, you know what? We're going to have our own market. We're just going to do it. So I, we just like had this space that we rented out for them to have a market. And I said, well, you know, I really need to help set them up for success. So we put together this little like mini business curriculum where we taught them entrepreneurship 101. This class is still in our program. It's the core to our program to this day. And so the moms who are in the community all joined in. They lent their expertise. We got the girls like up to speed. They got ready to do their pitch and we opened up the doors to this market. So, you know, it's a nice crowd. I'm inside, so I can't really see what's going on on the outside. One of the people at the market comes up to me and they're like, Roxanne, look up in the hills. And I'm like looking up. They're like, do you see those cars? The parking lot has flooded. Everyone <laughs> is like at the farmer's market and the cars are like up in the hills trying to like find a parking spot to come to this farmer's market. Well, to, to this like girlpreneur market that we had created. <laughs> And so that day, 400 people came through and shopped. And so it wasn't necessarily like the number of people that was so impressive. Can you just imagine that for these little girls, 400 people came through, that meant that they delivered hundreds of pitches. And so even for the most introverted girl, by the time you delivered a pitch 100 times, it's gonna be rolling off your tongue with eloquence. And so I just, at that moment, I was like, they are like developing these leadership skills, they're building their confidence, and they don't even know. And it's just happening organically. And as a mom of girls, I am keenly aware of all the gaps that exist, you know, from the wage gap, the confidence gap. I know that between ages 8 to 14, girls lose 30% of their confidence. They're at risk at losing that much. And so the fact that here we are, these girls are organically right in that sweet spot of 8 to 14, and here they are pitching their products. And at the end of the day, one of the things that we taught them was you really have to think about you know, your personal finance. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go shopping after you get them? No, we have to plan this out. You need to think about how much are you gonna reinvest in your business? How much are you gonna save? How much are you gonna earmark for something special that maybe you wanna buy? And how much will you donate to a cause or a charity that you care about? So by the end of the day, you know, they're earmarking their profits and this funny thing happens. They start to go around and they start to shop and it's products like this, right? <laughs> like pride bracelets um, these are the most recent so there's like let's see BLM I stand with AAPI um, just 
all this stuff and it all goes a lot of the proceeds go back to charity and at the end of the day they have their money and i'm gonna put the mic down they start getting this i want all i'll take one each (laughs) (laughs) they don't have to ask permission they don't have to have allowance and they're just like so proud and i thought their confidence is through the roof and my mind was blown and at that moment that was what i knew like we have to like cultivate these girls entrepreneurial spirits in like a real and like just a professional way and give them the resources that they need and so at that time that was when i founded girls crushing it with the mission of empowering girls to flex their leadership muscles through entrepreneurship so <laughs> Thank you. (laughs) Okay, so that was three years ago. In the time since then, we have built out our curriculum and the girls are learning everything from, um, gosh, from sourcing to like um, ideation and prototyping. They're learning like inventory management. They're learning (laughs) fulfillment. All these things that you guys are doing in there, they're doing it just like at a smaller scale and they're doing it soup to nuts. So um, so to date, we have educated 1,000 girls in entrepreneurship, and our pop-up shops have been visited by more than 10,000 people. Mm. And thank you. And so um, our alumni, 97% report increased confidence. Um, oh, seven minutes. Oh, my God. Okay. During the pandemic, we partnered with NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center to move our programming virtually. And um, so we're on track to educate 2,000 girls this year. $10,000 from Title IX will provide 50 girls with full scholarships and one-on-one coaching and startup capital to um, help fund their business. Um, Thank you. So, (laughs) this is rad. Um, (laughs) Also, capitalism is super scary. I'm glad that you're doing something good with it. Um, So tell me more about how you pivoted during COVID and went virtual. Let's hear more about that. You're welcome. Okay, so we partnered with NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center to roll, we partnered with NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center to roll our programming online. It gives the girls a much more, like we didn't know if this program was viable online. We thought like so much of it was about the experiential. So we didn't even know if people would be interested in it. Well, we opened it up, it's sold out, and there's a much more deeper understanding that's going because now the girls are launching online shops. So now they're learning everything from search engine optimization, they're learning customer experience, customer journey, again, like with the fulfillment, the inventory management, like all of this is like happening with these little kids. So like you guys are their rock stars. And so like a partnership with you guys would really like, I hear you guys talk so much about like own risk and lead and fail fast. And like that is what these girls are learning and we're, they're just the next generation of y'all. So. Um, sounds like we need them to help us run our Draft for Success online shop, so let me know. Uh, um, how do they find you? Um, are these girls that tend to have parent support and money to start it? Like, how, how, What's the, kind of the demographics of the, of the young women who are joining the program? So initially it was really organic and it really, like we didn't do any advertising. It all sprawled from like that initial Facebook post. But then as we went on and we partnered with Girls Festival and um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, it allowed us to really expand our demographic. And so we've really, um, we also have recently started our second chapter. For the second chapter, um, 100% of those guys all got um, full scholarships. They had access to stipends and startup capital. And so we're really just keenly aware of making sure that we have the resources in place to support all girls. And you know, we have this really deep, um, just knowledge and sensitivity to the fact that the wealth gap and the pay gap is so much deeper for girls of color. It's 78 cents to the dollar for 
white women and it's more like 60 cents for women of color. And so we really um, want to be able to make the program not only just free, but to be able to give them like the support and financial resources that they need to kickstart a business. So what does your outreach to that community look like? So um, our outreach right now, we have mentorship in place. And so when we do a partnership like with Girls Festival, we um, are able to pair them with one-on-one -on -one coaches who can help guide them. When we do a partnership with Big Brothers Big Sisters, they have their big sister who can help coach them in a way that like maybe a parent might be able to do it. So now they have like their parent, but they also have like their coach and they also have our coach. And so we're building that into the process to just give them even more resources that we're not in the maybe like initial um, prototype with how we set up the program. Now we're looking at like building those resources in. Um, this is so cool. <laughs> uh, so obviously you get your business babies at kind of all different levels of their, their business journey there. Um, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Um, with your curriculum, is there a specific course or a benchmark that they've got to complete before they can vend or participate in a pop-up shop or sell online? It's such a good question. I mean, we don't, our business is not selling products. Our business is confidence and education. And so we want to give them the access and the space to produce a prototype, fail quick, see and work your way through that process. So when you come out the other side, you are really confident at what you've accomplished. You've channeled your ingenuity into something that has like empowered you economically and to make an impact on your community because you're donating back. And so you don't just get to sell at a table. Our, um, the, the ability to have, to participate in a pop-up shop is sort of like a graduation ceremony. You can't just go to the pop-up. You have to put in the academic work first and then you get to participate in the pop-up shop. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, how big is your team and how are you looking to expand that? So we have a team of two and um, I'm a full-time executive director. Um, we just got a big grant from Wells Fargo and instead of paying myself, I hired my second person who was like a volunteer, but she's so awesome. It's like I had to lock her down before she got away. And so we took a big portion of Wells Fargo to hire her. She's in charge of curriculum programming. Um, she can just, she's kind of like a pinch hitter. She can do it all. And so um, we also are really, um, we have this pipeline of girls that are coming through. And so we really tap into their leadership skills so that they then are guest facilitators. They're sharing their stories. Like we have one girl who invested in a mutual fund and she comes back and tells her story of like her financial planning. And so they come back and they, she's 13. <laughs> yeah, and so we are building also, like we're building leaders and facilitators who are teenagers as well. Maybe she can clinic us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she would love that. <laughs> she would. You know, I have to <laughs> what happens if, and, and you, you kind of mentioned this with the fail quick, but what happens if the girls' products don't sell? Like, what happens if they come to the pop-up shop and nobody buys anything? So, or? that is a great question. And so, we really want to emphasize to them that it is, this, is a, this is all about process. And so when we leave, like they have learned how to do customer surveys. And so they're gonna do a survey, like why did it fail? What's the customer feedback? Ask your friends. Also, they're learning about testing beforehand. And so when they do their prototype, like we'll give them like a little bingo card where you have to check off, like which of these customer experience things did you do? And they're like checking bingo going like, I like gave samples to three friends and got feedback. And then afterwards I followed up and they gave me this feedback so that next time around I'm iterating. And so we really build that in. And so going into the gate, they know it's about the learning. Thank you. Um, I think it's really special that you yourself took the risk to help these little girls, you know, gain their confidence. Can you tell us a little bit about your personal background and kind of what this means to you? Thank you, yeah. So my background is in public relations. And so I started off, um, I'm originally from the South, so I was in Texas and I did public relations for energy and oil and gas companies. And then I moved into the nonprofit side and I did corporate relations for um, a theater and an art museum. So I have like the corporate experience and then I also have the nonprofit experience. And so it sort of put me in a position to be able to do a little bit of a lot of different things. And then I also was an entrepreneur for the last seven years. So. 
Thank you.